Okay, so looking at the multiple choice questions, the mass of 2.5 kilograms is replaced, released from rest at X and size down a ramp of height 3 meters to the point Y shown. When the mass reaches Y at the bottom of the ramp, it has a velocity of 5 meters per second. What is the average frictional force between the mass and the ramp? So the first thing I'm going to do is calculate the work done by the frictional force using the change in GP and the change in kinetic energy. Uh, we're not going to consider elastic potential energy because they've not been given any indication it changes. So it's lost GP equivalent to 3 meters, but it's gained kinetic energy from 0 to a speed of 5 squared. So what that calculates is that the work done by friction is going to be 42 joules. And if we divide that by the distance over which it's acted, that gives us an average force of 8.5 newtons. So which row shows the correct interactions experienced by a hadron or a lepton? So hadrons can experience strong interaction, leptons cannot. So therefore, straight away, we know it's got to be A or C. But hadrons can also experience the weak interaction, so it's going to be A. So three cells each have an EMF of 1.5 volts and an internal resonance of 0.6 ohms. Which combination of these cells would deliver a total EMF of 1.5 volts and a maximum current of 7.5 amps? So we don't even need to think about the internal resistance here. Only one of these combinations gives an EMF of 1.5, and that's option D, because they're all in parallel. OK, so when a nucleus of the radioactive isotope 6528, uh, what's that, Nick, nickel? No, I, who knows what that is, whatever. Uh, a beta minus particle and an electron and an antineutrino are emitted. How many protons and neutrons are there in the resulting daughter nucleus? OK, so first of all, it's a beta minus particle, which means a neutron turned into a proton. So the number of protons is going to go up by one, so it's going to be 29. So it's going to be either B or C. 65 is the nucleon number, so it's going to be option C for the number of neutrons. OK, so a bullet of mass 10 grams is fired with velocity 100 meters per second from a stationary rifle of mass 4 kilograms. Consider the rifle and the bullet to be isolated system. What are the recoil velocity of the rifle and the total momentum of the, rif momentum of the rifle and bullet just after firing? So no external force act is acted, so the total momentum is going to be zero. So it's got to be A or C. Um, so to calculate recoil velocity, you work out the momentum of the bullet, divide that by the mass of the rifle, and that gives you 0.25. So it's clearly option A. Which row correctly shows the electromagnetic radiations in order of decreasing wavelength? So the largest wavelength is the radio microwave end of the spectrum. Uh, so that's going to give us the option C going in decreasing wavelength. Which statement is correct about properties of unpolarized electromagnetic wave as it passes through a polarizer? The wave range isn't changed. No, nope, it gets polarized. Uh, it doesn't pass through. Some of it will. Uh, the electric field oscillates along the direction of travel. Nope, it's perpendicular. So the intensity is reduced, yes, because some of the planes of polarization get filtered out. OK, so the current in the cell is 10 amps, as shown. What is the current in the 2 ohm resistor? So I'm going to approach this by figuring out what the potential difference is by working out the total resistance, multiplying it by the current uh, to get the potential difference then using Ohm's law to figure out the current, giving us option B. What interactions are involved in the reduction of strange particle and its decay into a non-strange particle? So uh, strange particles are produced during strong interaction and they decay through weak, so we clearly want option A. A uniform wire fixed at both ends is plucked in the middle, so it vibrates at the first harmonic. What is the phase difference between the oscillations of P and Q? None whatsoever. Uh, they're in phase with each other. Okay, which row correctly states whether momentum, mass, and velocity are scalar or vector? So momentum is a vector, so it's either B or D. Mass is a scalar, still B or D. Velocity is a vector, so it's option D. 
diagram shows a uniform meter ruler of weight 1.5 newtons pivoted 15 centimeters from one end used as a simple balance. A scale pan of weight 0.5 newtons is placed on the end of the ruler and an object of unknown weight is placed inside it. The ruler moves to a steady horizontal position when a weight of 2.5 newtons is added a distance of 60 centimeters from the pivot. What is the weight of the object? So, taking moments about the pivot point, we know 0.5 plus W is the total weight force of the pan and the object. Times by 0.15 gets, so that's the moment of those objects. And that's going to be equal to the moment of the weight force of the ruler itself, which will be acting from the center of the ruler. And the add on to that, the 2.5 times by 0.6. Plug the numbers in, solve it, and we get 13 newtons, option C. What is the name given to a material that breaks without deformation when a force is applied? That is a brittle material that has no plastic deformation. A battery of negligible internal resistance and an EMF of 12 is connected in series with a heating element. The heating element has a resistance of 6.5 ohms when in operation. What is the energy transferred by the heating element when operating for five minutes? So we can use P equals V squared over R to find the to find the power, power times time is energy, so put all those values in, gives us option C. Okay, so the graph shows how the force applied to an object varies with time. What is the momentum gained by the object? Well, we need the area under the graph. So we've got a square and a trapezium, plug those numbers in, add them together, and we end up with option D. Newton seconds unit is the same as kilogram meters per second. When light of a certain frequency greater than the threshold frequency of a metal is directed at the metal, photoelectrons are emitted from the surface. The power of the light instant on the metal surface is doubled. Which row shows, how they shows the effect on the maximum kinetic energy and the number of photoelectrons per second? Well, if the frequency is the same, the maximum kinetic energy is the same. So it's got to be A or C. But if we have double the power, we can double the number that are emitted because doubling the power means twice as many photons are arriving in this instance. Line X on the graph below shows how the maximum kinetic energy of an emitted photoelectron varies with frequency with a particular metal. Which graph shows the results for a with a higher work function than x. So the threshold frequency is higher, so the um, frequency at which they first emitted will be higher. So that's clearly option A. Um, but other than that, it's the same phony as we have the same gradient graph. Which graph best shows the relationship between photon energy and wavelength? Uh, so E is equal to HC over lambda, so we want E is directly proportional to 1 over lambda. And the gradient there would be her Planck's constant times by the speed of light. Uh, yeah. Which row shows the change in velocity, frequency and wavelength of an EM wave as it goes from a less dense optical material to an optically more dense? So when you increase the density, velocity decreases, but frequency never changes. So that tells us straight away it's option C. And if frequency is unchanged, velocity decreases, wavelength decreases too. OK, so the diagram shows a ray of light traveling in air and incident on a glass block, refractive index 1.5. What is the angle of refraction in the glass? So we first need to find the angle of incidence by doing 90 minus 35 is starting in air, so the optic index there is 1. We know it's going into 1.5. Rearrange, plug in the numbers, gives us option C. Okay, intensity maxima are produced on a screen when a parallel beam of monochromatic light is incident on a diffraction grating. Light of longer wavelengths can be used, or the distance from the diffraction grating to the screen can be increased. Which row? gives the change in appearance of the maxima when these changes are made independently. So a longer wavelength gives you a bigger angle of diffraction for each of the orders. So longer wavelengths spaces them out. So it's going to be B or C. 
And increasing the distance doesn't change the angle, but with the same angle, if you move further away, that's going to space them more as well, giving us option B. Which cannot be used as the unit of Young modulus. Uh, so Young modulus is the same unit as the stress, which is the force divided by area. So A and B are clearly fine. And a Newton is a kilogram meters per second squared. So we so Young modulus is clearly kilogram per meter per second squared, which means C is wrong. Light of wavelength 500 nanometers is passed through a diffraction grating, which has 400 lines per millimeter. What is the angular separation between the two second order maxima? So the first thing I'm going to do, uh, in place of D, you put 1 over N. And then we can substitute the numbers in to find the angle to the second order. Uh, remembering to convert into lines per meter and then we double that to find the angle between the two second order which is going to be 42.47.2 two identical boils x and y are at the same height and a horizontal distance of 25 centimeters apart x is projected horizontally with a speed of 0.1 meters per second towards y at the same time y is just released they both move with no air resistance what is the distance between the balls one second later. So they have the same initial vertical component of velocity, zero. So they're going to always be at the same height as each other. So the only thing that matters is the horizontal velocity and the time. So multiplying those two together gives us a essentially that they're going to be 0.15 meters away. Okay. Okay, so two bodies of different masses undergo an elastic collision in the absence of any external force. Which rho gives the effect on the total kinetic energy of the masses and the magnitudes of the forces exerted on the masses during the collision? So it's an elastic collision, so the total kinetic energy remains unchanged. So it's A or B, and the forces are the same on both because of you know, Newton's third law. Okay, so two separate wires, X and Y, have the same original length and cross-sectional area. The graph shows um, delta L on the X and Y when the same force is applied to both up until the point they break. Okay, so which statement is incorrect? So for a given extension, more energy is stored in X than in Y. So we're comparing the areas under the graph, and you can see that's true. The young mod modulus of y is greater than that of x. Uh, that we can see is not true. The gradient is lower, so its young modulus is lower. They both obey Hooke's law, that's fine. And x does have a greater breaking stress, so that's fine too. Okay, so which statement about superconductors is correct? When a material becomes a superconductor, its resistivity is almost zero. Uh, that's not true, it's exactly zero. The temperature at which a material becomes a superconductor is called the critical temperature. Yep, that's fine. That's true. When a current goes through a superconductor, PD across it becomes maximum. No, PD across a superconductor is zero because there is no energy loss. Copper is a superconductor at room temperature. No, we haven't discovered any room temperature superconductors yet, so copper certainly isn't one. A wire has resistance R. What is the resistance when both the length and radius are doubled? So if you double the radius, you make the area times by 4, which has the effect of dividing the resistance by 4. However, doubling the length doubles the resistance, so we get left with resistance divided by 2. Okay, so which graph shows the variation of resistance with temperature for an NTC thermistor? So temperature and resistance are inversely proportional, so that's graph C. Final question. So the figure shows an LDR and a fixed resistor connected in series across a cell. The internal resistance of the cell is negligible. Which, sh which row shows how the readings on the ammeter and the voltmeter change when the, the light intensity is increased? So when light intensity is increased, the current through the LDR will increase or its resistance decreases. So the ammeter reading is clearly going to increase. So it's got to be either C or D. But the resistance the LDR drops, so its potential difference will drop as well, leaving us with option D, completing this paper to paper.